Okay, so thank you very much, uh, all of you, for coming uh, here today. For us, it's uh, very exciting, and uh, we are very happy uh, because we have been working uh, this project um, around two years. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that we are very happy to be here, and uh, we hope that you enjoy it and that you take advantage of, of what we are offering. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank. Uh, thanks to TEGDs as well for uh, receiving us today. And um, I would like to introduce uh, Manuel. Uh, do you want to introduce you first? Hi, my name is Manuel. Uh, I'm 32 and I'm flying currently for Iber Express. Before, I was flying for Aegean Airlines, uh, Greek Airline. And, uh, before I was cabin crew, working as a flight dispatcher, also I make a degree in aviation, and also I have a master's degree also in aviation management. So you can see my background is uh, incomplete, <laughs> but uh, anyhow, we will try to uh, to feed you uh, the, the, the passion that we have in aviation. No? The passion about to make this project, the passion to involve you in this project because you can be part of this, definitely, and we need you. That's the main thing. If we want the things improve, we need people like you, that you are young, and I mean it's for us. If we want that the things make better, we need to be together and we need to to improve. So as far as this, this is this is myself. <laughs> I cannot tell you we will talk later. Yeah? Thank you very much, Manuel. So, uh, my name is Gerard Liarte. I'm an airline transfer, pilot transport. Currently, I'm working for Iberia Airlines and flying the Airbus 330 and the 350. I also have experience uh, in the Airbus 320 family. And, uh, well, that sounds uh, really good. It sounds really good. But before that, I spent uh, almost two years working as a cabin crew in a German airline in England and also working well, you know, in restaurants, uh, waiting for the opportunity to find a job as a pilot. Um, since uh, more or less uh, yeah, approximately two years ago, Manuel and me, uh, we are collaborating with COPAC, and uh, we have been working to develop uh, the COPAC Next Gen uh, program, right? So, uh, let's gonna start. Uh, any one of you know or have ever heard about the COPAC? You know what it is? More or less. Okay. Uh, the translation is a little bit uh, well, um, uh, complicated uh, from Spanish to English, okay? But basically, um, COPAC is uh, the official association of uh, pilots of um, commercial aviation pilots in Spain, all right? And we. Sorry, I forgot this. Okay, so basically it's a Spanish, uh, Spanish pilot skill. So, um, we are right now around 6,500 uh, commercial aviation pilots inside uh, that belongs to COPAC. 4% are women and around 10% are helicopter pilots. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad to have here today a, a woman and uh, because luckily there are more and more joining the, the profession, which is very, very good. 
the main mission of BAC is uh, to safeguard uh, the safety and legality of flight operations, to guarantee the citizens' fundamental rights as air transport and civil aviation users. Like in other professions linked to health and, safe, and safety of people, membership is mandatory for working as a pilot in Spain, right? So, but um, what it's, uh, for, why it's important uh, go back for all of us, okay? Um, as I said before, is there to guarantee the citizens' fundamental rights as their for users, okay? But it has uh, other mission, other um, obligations. Another one is to defend good professional practices, which is very, very, very important for us because that means safety, okay? And safety for us as a pilot is everything. It's the most important thing that we have to think, uh, yeah, to, uh, think that we have to think about when we go into a cockpit, all right? Um, when, you go, uh, when you go flying, you always want to come back home safe, right? And if you feel safe, you can enjoy what you are doing, and, um, and COPAC stands there to defend the good professional practices and safety, right? Uh, COPAC is also the communication channel between the society and pilots, and uh, between administration and pilots. Why it is so important? Because as you know, when something happens in the aviation industry, um, all the social media, they say, um, or they sell newspapers with their, their own point of view, okay? But as you know, this is not always true, or it's not always what uh, really happened. So COPAC has uh, several numbers of um, aviation experts, which uh, they go um, to the source of what happened, and um, with the communication department, they issue the correct and appropriate information to the society, all right? And this is also to protect us. The communication channel between pilots and administration takes me to the next point, which is uh, monitor and participate in the regulations governing the pilot profession. Uh, this is really, really, really important because uh, COPAC is made. It was made. Uh, it was made for pilots uh, by pilots, and COPAC is the voice of pilots. So, if we have a communication. We can, um, with the authorities, they can hear us. And if they hear us, they um, uh, adhere the new regulations or the new air procedures to what pilot says, all right? And this is very important for us because in the end, um, in the administrations are not pilots. They are um, engineers or whatever, okay? But uh, they really take into account, at least here in Spain, okay? Um, the Spanish CAA must consult, must take advice to uh, COPAC um, on the on every change in the regulation that they are gonna that they are, they are planning to do. Okay, and I can tell you because I've seen it with my own eyes that they take very seriously what uh, COPAC says about um, their new regulations. And if it's necessary to change something, they change it. All right. So that's. It's one of the main points, uh, the main advantages that COPAC has for all parties, okay? These are some programs that uh, COPAC has developed. Um, the first one is um, it's an agreement between COPAC and NIDE. I don't know if you know what NIDE is. Uh, it's basically the manager of our navigation services here in Spain. And um, this agreement, or, uh, this project is called uh, Air Operations Safety and Efficiency Observatory. Basically, um, it's formed by uh, pilots, observers, observer pilots, and ATC controllers, observers. And on each um, air operation, they take notes, and then all this information is um, introduced into a computer program. Then uh, we get some uh, the results and we analyze if um, the operations are being efficient or not. Okay, for example, Manu and me, we are pilots observers, and it's something really, really interesting because uh, in this way we can uh, improve uh, the efficiency of the air operations, and not only because of the cost of the fuel, but uh, because of the um, impact on the environment. 
all right? Another program that uh, COPAC has uh, is the English and Spanish Evaluation Center, uh, SEC, for pilots in English and uh, Spanish. This is for the language proficiency check that you will need to, to have. And um, as I said before, uh, there are a great group of air operations experts in which uh, they are called um, in case that administration or any organization needs um, a professional point of view about something related to aviation, for example, if they want to introduce a new ILS procedure or if, you, uh, if they want to uh, install a new NAV-8. So these experts go there and they give them a professional point of view, okay? And uh, this is also very important for the safety of the operations. And um, one of the other uh, products that COPAC has developed is the PIPE, which stands for uh, Pilot Support Program. And um, this was because of the German Wings accident. Um, at that point, the administration, they thought that uh, it was very important to take care of the mental health of all pilots, okay? And um, other organizations, or at least the, the airlines, some other organizations um, need to have a pilot support program. This is something that maybe if you are young, you think that it's not very important, but life is very long, and uh, you don't, uh, never know when you may need this support, okay? Um, another ways that uh, COPAC has to support pilots are these ones. Um, there is a good team of um, experts uh, working for COPAC which help you to uh, resolve all the pre uh, professional inquiries that you may have. Uh, there are also uh, these, uh, these people uh, also help you with technical and legal support that you may need. Uh, there are lawyers uh, inside the uh, COPAC. Um, on the webpage uh, there are uh, also uh, specialized courses which are very, very interesting. And um, every time that something happens uh, on the, uh, the aviation, uh, at least in the Spanish territory, COPAC, uh, the, the communication department, issues a safety alert to warn all the members of uh, COPAC about this issue. It's not only in Spain, it's uh, worldwide, right? And um, they also uh, send updating professional information. And this last point, uh, it's also very interesting because it, from COPAC, um, COPAC helps you to proceed with some documents uh, related with license. I don't know if you have had the pleasure to deal with ISA, which is the Spanish CIA, um, but sometimes uh, some procedures are slow, um, especially for the ATPL certificate. Uh, Manu and me, we have uh, almost the same problem and uh, some other colleagues. Uh, when, you go, when you have uh, the hours to get the ATPL certificate, if you have um, some flight hours um, done um, outside of Spain, sometimes they, uh, yeah, they give you trouble with these uh, certificates, okay? Because they don't want to check or they are too busy to check the flight hours, etc., etc. And uh, COPAC helps you with, uh, with this, okay? They uh, check that these certificates are valid, are real, are true, and then uh, they issue um, a paper which you go to ISA and they accept it as uh, official and legal, okay? So now, um, it's the turn of uh, Manuel. You wanna explain them a little bit about what, what COPAC next gen is? Let's talk a bit about uh, this program, but first of all, I would like to consult you. What, what are your main concerns about to find a job? For example, any one of you, uh, what are your fears? I mean, the interview, uh, the process to the documentation that you need to fill. What are your main concerns now, nowadays? I mean, to find a job, what are your main concerns? Any one of you? The actual fact is there is a Yeah, it's a main concern, definitely. 
at all. I, I agree with you 100%. Any others? The interview is, uh, yeah, for sure, is another one that can well, make you think of oh, how it's gonna be, uh, gonna be prepared simulator, <laughs> everything. Any other? Yeah, like you said, the assessments and so on. Yeah, assessment, for sure. The whole process. So, Copacnes Gen is gonna help you with all of this. It's gonna, let's see, what is the next course? So Compact Next Gen, as you can see here, is a, is a program that is going to help you right now. I mean, all of you, if you want to sign in in this program, from now you can send us your queries and we can help you. And also you can be in other programs that we will talk later in the presentation. But our main goal is to support students, to help them to find the first steps in the procession. In the last year, I mean, it lasts a year and it's totally free. This is the good thing. Of course, no? it's free. <laughs> um, so, how are we going to help you? Of course, uh, we have been involved in this program, Iran and me and other colleagues, during one year, and um, during the COVID situation, it was all online. We were making this online. So it's not the same, and now that we are here, we can talk, Whatever you want, we will try to solve you your requires, your questions, whatever you want. Feel us, uh, feel free, sorry, to ask you whatever you want. So we are going to support you in a professional guidance and group mentoring. We have a program of mentoring, and we we can help you with all of this. How to succeed in your linguistic competence exam? We have also uh, some uh, speeches on during uh, the whole program that last one year that we are going to talk about this. Professional access, for example, we are going to talk forecasts, options, and recommendations about where to find the job, for example, no? and the possible problems that we can face during the legal stages of your contract, and all of this, you know, that most of the airlines, they work nice, but others, the contract and so on, they can be tricky. So we can help you with all of this as well. We have also online webinars that we want to talk about medical examinations and health advice for pilots. Normally, we are young, we don't have problems, but who knows? So we can talk also, we have experts that we will talk about this as well in, in our online webinars. We have also uh, online webinars about type ratings, all you need to know, and edit codes for pilots. This thing, you believe that it's not normal, but all of you have social media, I believe, right? And most of you probably you, you post uh, in Instagram or TikTok or whatever you post your flights and so on. As you can see, and Gerard and me will see, also we saw that uh, some of the posts, come on, they, they dance or they remove the, you know, the tie or whatever. I mean, this is not professional. So we want you in the same way as us we like and probably most of you like as well. We have to respect our profession. If we don't do it, who's gonna do it? So this is our, some of the people that is working with us right now. We have, for example, the vice president of ECA, which is the European Cockpit Association. We have uh, the main chief of uh, global training aviation as well involved in the program. Uh, as you can see, this is our, some of the people who is involved in our programs. And this is also, <laughs> you can see yeah, myself, and some of the colleagues that is working with us uh, that we are going to uh, all schools in Spain. Uh, also, Gerard, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we send you the, as well, as, as once you sign in this program, we will send as well our magazine and also we send you a newsletter with all news that we believe that they are relevant for you at your stage. Also, as you can see, we have some discounts. Uh, even if this program is free, we have some discounts that you can take part of it. For example, like a language competence exam preparation course, you can take a discount of this. You can take discounts for medical examination and aeronautical training. 
So, sounds good so far. I mean, it's fair enough, it's free. So, this program, I believe that uh, it's really nice because we will put together our main concerns about to find your first job in the industry. This is the good thing. We are going to share our experience because Jeremias, you have heard, we have passed in uh, many states until find our first job, and I believe that we can help you. Talking to you because I mean, we have been uh, in your position before. Uh, during the last year, in our first year, uh, we had almost 100 members all around Spain. Highly we had also uh, good participation in all our webinars, despite of the fact that it was all online. We lose you know, the face-to-face, -face, the contact with human, so it was not easy. But I think uh, at the end, uh, the guys that were in this program, they at the end, they sent us uh, greatness about uh, what we do. Uh, networking with aviation experts and high experience pilots, as we talked before, and as I told you, we will try, I mean, no, it's not 100% quality, but we will try to solve you all your inquiries that maybe you could have to find the, your job. I mean, or maybe you see a contract of, what do you think about this? Is this legal or not, it's going to be problematic for me, uh, tax talking, if I live in Spain or I have to find a job in the UK, for example, all these kind of things, we will try to solve it. Uh, when I finish my studies and as well, we face all these problems but with no help. Because, for example, Gerard and myself, at least, we didn't know any pilot or any professional that could help us with all these inquiries. So, I think and this, this program is really useful. And also, as I told you before, we need people like you, John, to help us to build a new community to improve our conditions. That's definitely, if we don't involve in this kind of programs, or in this kind of, to... Mm, yeah, or, yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, organizations, yeah. In, in the end, as you said at the beginning, uh, COPAC is, uh, it was uh, made by pilots for pilots. And um, COPAC, like any other organization uh, concerning pilots, out there to protect our profession and protect ourselves. And we have to, um, we need to create this feeling of appearance, uh, of, of belonging to these organizations because uh, these organizations without us, they are nothing. They are nothing. Okay. So keep this in mind. It's what uh, Manuel is trying to, to tell you, and it's one of uh, the most important things that uh, you need to understand. Okay. That today we are here, that tomorrow you will be here. Okay. Hopefully. Uh, so in this, and even more to a, a new, uh, another new uh, pilot. All right. And um, this is something very beautiful about our profession. Okay. Uh, bec uh, because here. Um, we uh, we help each other a lot, and you will realize when you uh, arrive, when you get your goals of being an airline transport pilot, and you uh, will uh, you will think um, in the past, you will see that uh, there was a lot of people that helped you, maybe uh, just a little bit, but this help you, this help um, was um, was necessary to make possible the dream. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it, basically. And what does, if you want to go back, this is one of, um, one activity that we performed. Uh, it was um, uh, ruled by uh, Joshua Saltua, he's uh, captain of uh, 737 in uh, Emirates. Uh, it was called uh, Next Gen Challenge, and it was uh, focused for um, pilot interview preparation. There, was, uh, there were uh, three videos. Uh, they were sent um, each week. Of, uh, it was in the month of February. And um, at the end of uh, the month, it was an online webinar with Josu, directly with all the participants of this challenge. And at this, um, um, this point, 
they, uh, they were able to ask him, ask them uh, all the doubts that, that they had about uh, the, the selection process uh, for an airline. Because um, I see that uh, some of you, um, uh, well, uh, you have your own worries about this. Uh, they are quite uh, complex and uh, sometimes quite difficult, right? Yeah, I know. We know that the situation right now is difficult, you see? I mean, uh, we are starting to get over of all this COVID situation and so on, but you have to be prepared. You never know when your airline or airlines are going to start the recruitment. So the theme of this program or the main goal of this program is to prepare you to be ready whenever an airline calls. So. Maybe you know how, you know, there is books about to prepare about the airline interviews and so on, but this is extra information of people. I mean, a book is a book or forums. You can find uh, how is a Ryanair interview or Bolotea interview or whatever. You can find them. But uh, maybe the, you know, the interview with uh, uh, human resources, you know, face to face, how to look to the interviewer. No, these little things that make the difference always. That maybe they can make you pass or not. So these programs uh, is useful because of this. I wish when I finish I had a program similar like this. Because it's free and they can help me. So what, what else? What, what can I ask? Oh, yeah, it's ideal. And, um, yeah, all of these you can see. These are the members of the uh, next gen, and what what have made uh, our presentations uh, to the people all around Spain, as you can see. Yeah, this is a video of one of the participants of next gen uh, last year. Uh, he was so grateful that uh, he wanted to serve with all the new. Uh, um, possible candidates uh, how was his experience okay so if you want to watch the video it's only a couple of minutes I have to do myself the subtitles because it's, it's in, in Spanish so in that way with the subtitles you can understand that all of you what he's saying so just give me a second Now, after we finish, uh, we can talk about whatever you want, uh, your concerns about the interview, how is the current situation in the airline industry, whatever you want, we have time. So if you don't have anything else to do, we can talk uh, here uh, anytime that you want, all the questions, we will try to, to solve them. But if you want, we can talk. Okay, I play the video. Maybe I think that you all will have to read the subtitles because I don't know why the sounds working, all right? So it's I don't know if you know why the sounds uh, the sound doesn't work. But anyway, no problem. Okay, one hundred percent. I record it like as we I play it like this and that's it. Okay. Sorry about the sound because he was saying that eh? it's not a game <laughs> creative. He <laughs> was saying that. Uh, yeah.
Yeah, well, it was uh, just, um, just had some comments of one of the sessions, the last session that, that we performed, I think Manuel was there with yeah. the training. And this, uh, these are just a, a screenshots from the internet, so I couldn't translate this. Uh, Yes, yeah, you can read. Uh, uh, most of the people are grateful to about how we have helped them to to this stage that you're gonna face what you finish. And also, if you have, I mean, your course is here 12 months, 15 months, so you have to, to start thinking what you can, of course, because your main goal is to finish. But as far as fast as you start thinking about these things you will be perfectly ready when you finish. This is the, the main thing. So the people is uh, thanking us about uh, our uh, compromise, so about commitment, yeah. Yeah, commitment, commitment, maybe, that, we have with them. commitment that we have with, with them. No? And he's mentioning the, all the people that have been involved in, in the commitment and so on. So you can see most of the people is thanking us about th this. So now in 2022, uh, they are coming, what's coming next? Uh, we are constantly working uh, to make this program and try to offer you as much as possible and uh, with a high quality, of course. And um, today it has been signed this Carlos Salas Grant for Academic Excellence. Um, with uh, between COPAC, CEPLA, and uh, Global Training Aviation. Okay, these grants uh, are for how to perform at the rating of 3.2% annually here, and um, they have the name of Carlos Salas. Carlos Salas was the the last dean or uh, director or uh, manager of COPAC. Okay, uh, he was deceased because uh, he uh, died during the pandemic. And uh, without him, we wouldn't be here today, okay? So we are here because of him, because he trusted in us, and he thought that uh, it was possible to make uh, something different and to help uh, all the people, especially um, new pilots, all right? So this is a very good point, because if you join uh, COPAC next gen, you will have uh, more points uh, the final eval evaluation in order to uh, be able to access one of the uh, of the grants. All right. Other program uh, that um, we hope that uh, he, uh, it's, uh, it starts soon is a mentoring program. Okay. This um, this project I'm highly involved, and we hope that maybe September October we can start with it. Uh, it will be this. Uh, it will be available for all the members of COPAC, and um, as the name said, it will be a program of mentoring. Basically, uh, if you request to be a mentee, you will have a mentor. This mentor will be a professional, an expert airline pilot, what airline, or depending on the sector of aviation that you like. Maybe you you are interested in firefighting, so it will be a. Um, Ex uh, professional pilot of firefighting, uh, okay? And um, during uh, the time that you need it, you will have this person there to help you, to support you. This is very important because um, I think that most of the people uh, don't have any, um, well, don't know anybody in the aviation industry. And in that way, uh, you can be um, put in contact with one professional and can assess you during the time that you need. All right, but anyway, uh, yeah, this missile is coming next. This is uh, already done, and uh, we are uh, little by little. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And yeah, because you we only run this program one year, so we have to improve, and also we will need you to tell us what you need. You know, maybe we never thought about one inquiry that you will tell us, and oh, this is useful. Why not put it there? So that's why the reason because. We need you to evolve, to still improving and make your stage easier. That's it, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, so well, basically, if you want to join Copac Nation, uh, 
there is here a QR code. Uh, you may scan it, and it will redirect you to a web page uh, in the Copac, and then you have to insert this password down there next to the 22 gen, all right? And then uh, it redirects you again uh, to the um, presentation that form, all right? And uh, yeah, we are gonna leave this slide here at the time that you need, okay? And basically the, the presentation has finished right now. Uh, once again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for your interest because uh, this is possible because of you and uh, it's also uh, for, for your wellness and yeah, for your future. And uh, now, if uh, you like, we can, uh, you can ask whatever you like. You can stand up, we can talk here, whatever you want. We can make uh, like a, you know, like a talk of friends if we were in a bar or a path or whatever. So feel free to ask whatever you, you want.